Thank you, Administrator uh, Regan, for uh, being here today and for your work to protect human health and environmental uh, justice in our communities across the country. Um, it is my fundamental belief that everyone, regardless of zip code, socioeconomic status, race, uh, deserve to breathe clean air, drink clean water, um, and to that end, the work that the EPA and the Biden-Harris administration are doing for environmental justice is critically important um, because business community has always had a seat at the table. Utility CEOs and their lobbyists and lawyers have always had a seat at the table. Who has not always had a seat at the table are the people in the communities where power plants go, where pipelines go, where often they destroy communities um, they destroy historically black or, or indigenous communities, um, or they're concentrated in communities where people don't have a voice, they have an overabundance of pollutants, and not surprisingly, end up with some of the worst health outcomes. And I represent a lot of those communities, like Charles City County or Hopewell, which as you know, um, has a number of, power of, of chemical plants that have repeated violations of EPA rules. Uh, and you and I have exchanged some correspondence around that. And so I wanted to follow up on um, Representative Lee's question about how EPA is empowering the communities that are affected by repeated toxic chemical exposure or an overabundance of um, projects in their area that leads to more pollutants. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to add to your answer to her, or more importantly, tell us how Congress can help you do your job to give these voiceless communities a voice and a seat at the table. Well, thank you for that. And I can say that Congress has done an excellent job in the Inflation Reduction Act awarding $3 billion for environmental justice projects. That is uh, one way money is talking and actually will bring people to the table with resources and the technical capabilities to not just be at the table, but participate in the conversations. Listen, I've said from day one, that EPA will use its full enforcement authority where we see people cheating and violating, especially in these communities that are disproportionately impacted. I think we have a track record that represents that. I've also done a journey to justice tour to highlight for the nation that in 2023, we still have communities that have a lack of access to clean drinking water, disproportionately impacted by PM 2.5 and other pollutants. And so we are designing our policies and regulations through that lens of environmental justice. We're using our enforcement arm and we're designing programs to be sure that communities like the one you just laid out will have access to that $3 billion so that they can fund solutions that are on the ground. Thank you for that. Um, and earlier this year, I led a letter to the EPA in support of protective mercury and air toxic standards for power plant emissions, um, and along with a few of my colleagues on this committee, sent a letter calling for strong and transparent regulation of PFAS in plastic containers under the toxic substances rule. Um, I look forward to updates from you on this, uh, and with a government shutdown or long-term continuing resolution on the horizon, I'm interested in hearing about the impacts uh, either would have on the EPA's ability to provide assistance to those communities that need it most. And so can you talk about the impact that either a shutdown or a long-term continuing resolution would have on your work protecting these communities? It, it continues to <clears throat> make uh, our communities vulnerable. Uh, if we don't have the uh, personnel on the job focused on community outreach, ensuring that these communities are competitive for grants, ensuring that they have a seat at the table as we think through how to design regulations, it continues to disproportionately impact those who are already burdened. So a, a shutdown uh, doesn't do our economy any good, doesn't do any of us any good, but it especially disproportionately harms those who are on the front lines of pollution. Thank you, I agree wholeheartedly. And again, wanna thank you for your work uh, giving these communities that have over the years, and in some cases uh, over the past century, been overburdened by pollution in the name of um, energy uh, and, and help making sure that you are helping to give these communities a voice and a seat at the table going forward, as well as addressing the disproportionate impact that uh, environmental policy and industrial policy decisions have had on those communities. Thank you very much. Thank you. I yield back. The gentlelady yields back. The gentleman from Tennessee was